haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Let's do the standard New Line logo, but since it's vampires, let's make it red instead of blue. Get it? And that's a sin because... Well, I guess just because CinemaSin says it's one. Yippee. Trained medical professional slams a pregnant woman's head on the table. It's almost like she's fighting against them while they're trying to examine her during a tense medical emergency. Y you left out that part, so I didn't think you noticed. Hey, childbirth isn't remotely frightening enough as it is. Let's cut it like a horror film and have random background characters talk about her being bitten. You know to help comfort the viewer. <laughs> what the hell is this in? This is an action horror film about vampires. I'm almost positive no one on the screenwriting team was interested in comforting the viewers. You act like a horror film's entire purpose isn't to at the very least unsettle the viewer. Zip code 90031 is in Los Angeles, but the state is listed as Florida. Nice catch. This is a cinema sin. But I'm extremely petty, so I won't be removing a sin here. Why? Because of the unclear nature of your sins, which has caused a glut of moronic followers that changed their stance on a whim. For example, they always tell me these videos are jokes, but where is the joke here? 90031 is Lincoln Heights, not Florida, so this is CinemaSins accurately pointing out a movie mistake. Why does this count, but when I prove them wrong about something, it doesn't count? Grand Theft Baby. Do you not hear this woman's EKG? She dead. Her baby belongs to the state. By making the movie's title card the same font and size as its immediately preceding lead actor credits, it's possible some of the original viewing audience suspected Blade was just another actor in this film. And maybe he is? So people that purchased tickets to Blade saw Blade in the title credits and thought Blade was just another actor in a movie called Blade? I'm sorry, but I don't think the general population is as dumb as you. Sped up time-lapse opening credits footage is both a waste of time and a metaphor for humanity's rat race. Then why did you send it? That was at best a wash, and at worst, a wash. What the f*** is that? Guy clearly sees a body in a bag and still follows her deeper into the slaughterhouse. I mean, it's a slaughterhouse. You're going to see bodies in bags. But dude, the chick that he's following is Tracy Lords, one of the most famous and infamous porn stars of her time. If this lady is taking you somewhere seedy, you'd better go. Ladies and gentlemen, Tracy Lord's honest film career in three seconds. Considering Tracy's porn career was absolutely ridiculous, this is an upgrade, frankly. This guy took dance lessons from Elaine Bennis. If he did, he'd absolutely have everyone's attention. You know, because Elaine was killing it. Right? Right? So, who hooked the sprinklers up to blood instead of water in this illegal temporary club? Where is the blood reservoir this shit is tapping into? Jeremy's watching a film where the premise is a half-vampire hunting an underground society of vampires, and his question is, who set up the blood reservoirs in clubs meant for vampires? Who? As in, not obviously other vampires that presumably built this place. Also, this would be like if a normal nightclub decided to spray beer all over everyone, which would be very sticky. And most of the nightclub occupants would rather just drink the beer normally. Besides being kind of gross, this seems incredibly wasteful. I mean, I guess, but vampires aren't exactly like humans. I mean, they usually revel in the morbid and take pleasure in gore, blood, and filth. Besides, when's the last time you've been to EDC? I'd wager the patrons of that excuse for women to be half-naked would love for cocaine to be sprinkled down on them like fresh powdered snow. Is this guy the only mortal they brought to the vampire ball to eat? Most of the other vampires here are probably going to be super pissed that they didn't get to have any human blood, because there's no way he could feed all of them. This would be like if it was my turn to bring donuts on donut day and I only brought one donut. I'd probably have fired. It's not like that at all. You just lamented the blood sprinklers. They were getting their fill already. Perhaps some of them prefer to kill a fresh human, but they were all clearly here having a good time without this dude. Everyone in this joint coordinates the stoppage of the blood play upon Blade's arrival. Jeremy points out things on the screen cliche. 
Also, Blade was somehow able to 100% sneak into this spot at this moment with no one seeing it, which is goddamn impossible, but whatever. Wait, you think it's impossible for one guy to show up and not be noticed in a club with loud music and a scrum happening in the mosh pit? And I like the caveat you threw in there. They didn't notice him until this moment? When should they have noticed him? Because that moment would have been exactly like this one. If they would have noticed him earlier or later, you're saying you wouldn't have called those moments convenient too? Stop the cap. <laughs> There were hundreds of them standing there, right? Is the movie really trying to tell me they couldn't all take him on and instantly succeed? But no, nope, they take him on one by one. You cut the context out of this scene. In the scene where you were complaining about them not noticing him, the audio of the footage you're showing is the vampires realizing who Blade is and saying aloud that they know him. That scene shows them giving him space and some of the vampires fleeing, which shows they are afraid of him. So the in-universe reason for them attacking one at a time is those that did were the only ones brave enough to face him. The out-of-universe reason is one-on-one -on -one fights, even brief ones look better on film and give the audience something to focus on in a frenetic scene. Stormtroopers eat your heart out. We found a group with even shittier aim than you. Vampires. He says over footage of the vampires hitting Blade square in the back, a spot that could potentially prove fatal for most people. Ah! This bull Sinning this bullshit. That's worth these many sins. Blade is able to maintain a normal level of back flexibility even though his scabbard is built into his jacket and runs down his back. Okay. You pointed that out like it was impossible, despite actual footage of it being done. This is the windiest alley in the history of cinematic alleys, Jesus. Everything wrong with Blade, ladies and gentlemen. Wind. What are the odds a character about to be drawn into this vampire story is a hematologist? Like, lottery winning odds, right? Whatever the odds are, they are not zero. The hematologist was drawn into the story because the coroner asked her to look at a blood sample of a vampire, which turned out to be abnormal. I would think a hematologist would be the least surprising person to exist in a story like this. Hell, technically Whistler is a hematologist, so really you're asking what are the odds of there being two? Honestly. You ever have second thoughts about us? Guy demonstrates, with the timing of this question, why any sensible girl would break up with him. Yet another instance of you saying something the film is also saying, but treating it as something wrong with the film. With a reality as populated by vampires as this movie will suggest, it's a wonder this shit never happened before, honestly. What evidence does this film give you that it hasn't happened before? I mean, you saw a club full of suckheads, right? Surely at least a handful of them were turned in a manner similar to this, no? Also, this supercharred burn victim now appears to be cosplaying as a burn victim, given his freedom of movement and the silliness of his appearance. You're aware that's a vampire, right? As in a supernatural entity with superhuman powers and abilities? I get it, 1998 special effects weren't the best, but you're also trying to make the case that he shouldn't be able to move around so freely, forgetting that he has a healing factor. Despite leaving tons of victims behind at crime scenes prior to this, Blade decides to get invested in this one, which turns out to be a really good idea later, but whatever. The film shows us Blade takes pity on her because she reminds him of his own mother. Blade just had a flashback of his mother that he definitely couldn't remember because he was just born. No, I agree, but that is the reason he saves her, which nullifies your previous sin. I think these cops might be even worse shots than the vampires earlier. Why even have guns in your movie? I get it's a trope to make fun of stormtroopers, but why do you think that everyone with a gun is a crack shot? Real-life cops themselves will tell you they don't hit every shot, and neither do soldiers, people that train to be as accurate as possible. In fact, films like John Wick, where the character hits almost every target he fires at, are the inaccurate ones. If you're looking for authenticity, this is it. We can't play the song, but Marvel paid money to play one and a half seconds of Bad Moon Rising. New Line Cinema paid money to play one and a half seconds of Bad Moon Rising. Deacon Frost. I'm going to have a prominent bruise if this movie keeps beating me over the head with character names like this. Are they sure they don't want to change Karen's name to Dr. Pretty Brave Smart Brain? I'm not entirely sure what the criticism is here. Are you saying they're saying everyone's full name? I get why a dude named Jeremy Scott wouldn't like everyone saying full names all the time, but then what does Karen have to do with this? Because the other insinuation is that everyone's name is relevant to their characterization, which is a stupid criticism considering Deacon Frost is a comic book character. That is his name in the books, and they didn't just make up a character like they did with Whistler, who strangely has escaped criticism from all those people angry about the race change in The Little Mermaid. You know, because Blade turned a black character into a white one? Funny that. I think my favorite thing about this vampire movie is the undead UN meeting, where they argue about which kind of vampire is more important. I was born a vampire, but you, Frost, you were merely turned. That's racist. That's uh, vampire racist. Yes, that was the point of this meeting. And I think it's hilarious you tried to invoke modern politics on ancient supernatural blood drinkers. 
Who's gonna go tell them? You? <laughs> Good luck, homie. Karen triggers the hand-exploding mechanism in Blade's sword without hurting herself. Because, as we are clearly shown, it is on a timer, which activated and made her remove her hand. Gas wasting his waste. And then he lights a cigarette. I'm pretty sure they show that specifically to show how much of a maverick badass Whistler is, Jeremy. So where am I supposed to go? You've been exposed to them. One way or another, somebody's gonna take you out. All the more reason for you to answer her f***ing question. That was an answer to her question. His point was that she's going to die no matter what she does. He already told her to get out of the city. Also, Jeremy talks to ahem, <clears throat> yells at the screen cliche. I still think it's strange to say yells. Here, vampire mace. <sighs> What's the problem? Mace filled with garlic instead of capsaicin because they're dealing with vampires. It makes all the sense. If there's one thing people fear about vampires, it's their raw computational power. In this same scene, the film tells you this is an archive. That means these devices you see are servers. These archives are restricted to the members of the House of Erebus. If I'm being honest, I only understood like 50% of what that guy just said. I don't doubt it. Danny Frost, I'm talking to you! You bore me. What? What is even going on right now? You cut out half the f***. Scene. Blade drops off this vampire victim girl he helped save in the heart of Danger Town. Why did you even save her ass, eh? Is this your first time watching Blade? I find that incredibly difficult to believe, meaning you know he's using her as bait. You know the answer to your question, yet you still ask it and treat it as something the film just does for no reason. Back in my day, we called that Jeremy Fane's ignorance cliche. So Blade drops her off, she enters building, and immediately draws vampire assassin followers? How much does Blade suck at his job? <sighs> Police officer, I didn't mean to scare you. The front door was open. This guy followed the police protocol. If the front door is open, the officer is required to sneak up on the occupant of the home. Wait, let me get this one. In my universe, Jeremy said this about the cop in Home Alone. On home, the house looks secure. This asshole says the house is secure, even though Kevin didn't lock the door as he was running away from Marley. It smells fishy. This cop must be on Sal Maroney's payroll or something. He says the house looks secure. What does Kevin not locking the door have to do with that statement? You're suggesting the cops have the right to just enter someone's home, and they don't. So the point is, he would later contradict this reasoning. Oh, dude, wait, you were telling the truth. You are from a different universe, because I definitely didn't do that video yet. Jesus Christ, you still up to this point thought I was making that up? It's been three videos. Which is another thing, because back in my universe I was outputting over three a month. What? I've been busy. Suck my dick. So forget what you've seen in the movies. Does that include this movie? I'd love to forget what I've seen in this movie. This ain't Deadpool. He said that to a character within the movie, little guy. Which means you are ta yelling at the screen again. You ain't for the head or the heart. Anything else is your ass. Even though Blade has killed countless vampires during the course of this movie by hitting them anywhere in their midsection. Because he was using silver, which is one of their weaknesses, and he's clearly a seasoned fighter knowing precisely where to hit them. He's giving her targets suited for a beginner. Look, you're using the girl as bait. And you are stupid enough to say Shut up. I appreciate the help, random vampire chick, but I've got this. And you were stupid enough to take it? Jeremy thinks he's in the movie again. Vampire the Hut. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie cliche. Instead of luring Blade out of the vampire Bible room, they decide to bring the fight there so they can destroy these priceless artifacts. Well, technically, only the glass displays got destroyed. And what do they care anyway? They're the low-class Saiyans of this franchise, and not one of them is named Kakarot. Catch you f***ers at a bad time? Whistler ex machina. Continuing to butcher the Latin language. Blade's mother was attacked by a vampire while she was pregnant. And the vampire somehow didn't just kill and eat the fetus. Instead, a super vamp was born. Is there anything funnier than Jeremy thinking vampires are zombies that actually eat people? He'd undergone certain genetic changes. Oh. I thought the serum was supposed to suppress that. His body started to reject it. Exposition, exposition, exposition? Yes, exposition, f***ing exposition, exposition! Yes, exposition that you clearly need, mister. Why didn't the vampires eat a fetus? He told me what you are. You don't know anything about me. Except for all that stuff that Abraham just told her, basically your entire backstory. Yeah, but this phrase is a shortened form of, you might know my backstory, but you don't know me. It means just because you know a little about me doesn't mean you actually know me. For example, we all thought we knew R. Kelly, right? Get it? Neither Frost nor any of his vampire friends are affected by the sun rising quite like the guy they brought out here to kill. Yeah, yeah, sunscreen schmunscreen. He explicitly mentions the reason they aren't affected by the sun, and still questions why they aren't affected by the sun. You can't make this shit up. Also, this guy is already burning, even though the sun hasn't risen yet. That's probably because even though you can't see the sun, its rays are already being scattered by the atmosphere at the cusp of sunrise. This is called twilight. 
Science is fun. Why the hell is no one else burning up right now? I see that they have on their motorcycle get up, but their faces are still exposed to the sun until they put down these visors. And don't tell me it's because they put on this sunscreen, because I call bullshit on that being effective. And Dragon Eddie was definitely burning through his clothes earlier, so they should all be reenacting the Ark of the Covenant right now. You are conveniently leaving out that Deacon is wearing a thick black turtleneck with a leather jacket, and Dragon Eddie has on a thin white button-up shirt, which easily allows more sunlight to the skin. Take a step back. The reaction's energetic. Why not just say, don't put your eyes on that because it's about to explode, y'all? Is that not what she just said? She's a scientist, so she just said it more elegantly. Sunblock. Movie continues to expect me to believe that Frost is completely impervious to the sun's UV rays because he's wearing sunblock. I mean, that's kind of how sunblock works. By blocking out the sun's UV rays. Besides, this is very clearly a supernatural film about vampires, something that doesn't exist in our reality. If the film says vampires, who notoriously hate the sun, invented a sunblock that is better than ours, I have no reason to doubt that. It makes logical sense in that world. How long are these assholes standing here like this without someone calling 911 about the creeper and the abducted Asian girl? Let me invoke the geniuses that keep commenting on my Age of Ultron video. How would those people know she's not adopted? That's racist. Jesus, even Blade is a goddamn stormtrooper with the gun in his hands. Or Deacon Frost is on another level compared to lesser vampires who are themselves incredibly fast. They literally show this dude dodging bullets in bullet time, something they did before the Matrix. Blade rescues girl who should not have been in danger anyway since this truck should have f***ing slammed on the brakes ages ago. Two sins, one for calling an obvious bus a truck, and another for thinking a bus can slam on the brakes at street speeds and still stop at this distance. And for everyone that thinks that bus could have stopped, we once again have an instance of Jeremy, and whoever thinks this, misunderstanding things that are happening at the same time. In this shot, you can see the bus is almost directly on top of the girl the moment she lands in the street. The other scenes are just showing you what happened in that same span of time. Frost took her. Fine, but why did he leave you even a little bit alive? To leave a message for Blade? I thought that was obvious. You seem a bit tense. She actually looks calm as f but whatever. Right, because this is totally the face of a chick that is calm as f Last time I saw a woman's face like this, she tried ending me. Take it how you want. The blood god's come as a hurricane. An act of God. He's referring to the Blood God as an act of God, even though the Blood God's name calls him a god himself, which would seem to negate THE God's involvement in these proceedings. This is very similar to the conversations I have with religious folks in the comments section. They believe their god is responsible for everything, except of course the bad things, even though he himself stated he created evil. But if he created everything, then everything that happens is literally an act of God, including the actions of a lesser god. He supposedly set the events of everything in motion, so yes, everything that happens is because of his actions. Of course, we understand that Deacon is simply using a metaphor that Karen would understand, which is why he called a hurricane an act of God. Which, of course, some religious people don't believe their God is responsible for either, the cherry-picking bastards. Blade is stupid enough to let his guard down after the dead mother's trick, so as to be easily tased here. F***ing dead mothers, man. The guy that has his dead mother's driver's license after a couple decades after her apparent death would absolutely be stunned by the sudden appearance of his dead mother. Come the hell off it. Also, tasers work on the undead. Who knew? Blade is not undead. Besides, the body literally runs on electricity, so overloading the nervous system with an electrical stimulus can still cause the body to react, even a dead one. This is why when you pour soy sauce on an octopus, the tentacles move due to the sodium in the sauce being an electrolyte. You have to bite me and turn me in order to save the world cliche I ripped off from every vampire movie ever. I can't think of any movie before this where the vampire is trying to save the world and needed to bite someone to do it. You're doing what you did with Blade Runner, sinning the inventor of the trope by claiming others did it first. Didn't you just bite and turn her? She's not a fucking daywalker, right? Or does anyone you bite turn into, you know what? Fuck it, I officially don't care. Fuck you and the undead horse you rode in on movie. Even if Blade turned Karen, we are shown that becoming a vampire clearly takes some time. Karen was bitten earlier in the film and she cured herself days after it happened. Sure, Whistler injects her with garlic, but even then the implication was that she at least had until daybreak. This scene is happening maybe an hour after he bites her. Why the f*** is he in Moscow right now hunting vampires? Did he run out of vampires in the US to hunt? I guess we won't know until Blade 2. So you know that Blade is in Europe right now searching for Whistler, but you just pretend to not have information you obviously do? And even if you were trying to speak from the perspective of a person watching this film for the first time, why wouldn't Blade be here killing vampires after we saw the UN of vampires get wiped out? Wouldn't the implication be that he's going after the head of the snake again? God damn, you watch movies like I watch porn. 
Damn the story, I'm here for the ass. Who the fuck are you out of your damn mind? <laughs>